Hello, I'm Dave Berman. I'm a Regional Pest Technical Officer with the Queensland Murray-Darling Committee. My name's Tom Garrett, I'm the Weed and Pest Technical Officer and I work for QMDC and I'm based in Roma. We've got these uh, sniffer dogs, um, detector dogs, which uh, we've been training up since February and we got them particularly to, uh, well, the first reason we thought we'd get them was to try and control cats. And, and I knew they had a problem with cats out here. And it seemed like a good opportunity to um, do some training with our dogs to find cats in a real situation and, and do the job too. So we want, want to get all the cats out of the, the paddock so they can put more bilbies back in. We know that we, uh, from observations through the people that look after the, the bilbies, um, we have low densities of bilbies and low densities of cats as well. So, uh, large area, um, lots of trees, lots of bushes, lots of logs, lots of old rabbit warrens, and probably few cats and um, little time. I mean, there's only eight hours in a day. And uh, for the dogs to cover such a large area thoroughly to make sure that uh, there's no cats in there, it's just a task in itself, especially in the hot weather. You know, we're, uh, we're up to probably 30 degrees by 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, what we have to do is try and uh, find the scent of the cats, and uh, they've been trained to do this, um, but they can detect all sorts of scents, so many more than we can. And what we have to do is try and reward them for finding the scents that we want them to find. And that's a feral cat scent, which is pretty tricky because feral cats are probably very good at hiding their scent. They want to be hidden. They don't want their prey or predators to find them. And they're very good at that. Um, but we've tested our dogs on, on, um, on domestic cats and other cats and, you know, cats running across the road and, and they do pick up the scent. When you can map where you've been, um, you can see the areas that you've missed and the areas that you've searched very clearly. And I can see on here where Sophie is, I can see where Tom is and I could also see where um, Rocky is if I wanted to so we can coordinate where we're going. We need to cover all areas so this actually records where we're going, where the dogs go, where we go and we can put that on the map and we can see the areas that we've missed and the areas that we've looked at. The population density of cats within the exclosure isn't huge mm. so I mean we can go on the local knowledge from the rangers that are here that have already explained to us where they've seen some tracks but I uh, always difficult, so I suppose we've just got to look for some sign, whether it be tracks in the sand or some scat or some uh, some carcasses from animals they yeah. they but may have left. Pete says that um, he nearly or off, quite often sees cat tracks along this, uh, this softer creek here. Good place to start. Certainly is, and I mean, if they've if they've been here in the last few hours, the dogs should pick some scent up. This morning we had what we identified as a set of cat tracks coming down a, uh, an obvious sandy patch where the water runs into, into a clay pan and we could see that the, the tracks were old because it had been rained on because we had rain the night before we found them, um, but quite definitely a cat and Peter had identified that that particular area was where they often saw cats uh, crossing over. To, uh, to that particular clay pan to, to obviously hunt and feed. And as I said, we confirmed that it probably was regularly used by cats because only 70 to 100 metres from there, we found um, what was left of a bird that obviously had been caught by a cat and fed on that night. 
So uh, pretty sure there was a cat through there in the last couple of days. They, they're just naturally sneaky, elusive animals. And uh, especially when you haven't got a whole heap of them in the one area. I mean, I, I really believe that after the week here, I think we might be talking about, you know, the area we've covered, maybe one or two cats in the area we've covered so far. Yeah, well, they're, they're so active and they're, they're running around hunting. They're looking for the, this scent. And uh, I've, with, with the GPS on the dog and, the, and we're carrying a GPS, you can tell that they're doing at least twice as far as us. So um, they're covering a lot of country and they can smell a scent, you know, that's, um, I don't know, uh, if, if, if the wind's blowing in the right direction, that could be 50 metres, could be 100 metres away, they'll pick up a scent. So they're searching a lot wider area than we can. It's a big area and the, and the dogs uh, can obviously smell cats, but at this time of year the scent's rising off the ground, um, the dogs are hot, the cats themselves are hiding because they're getting out of the heat, so any help we can give the dogs by identifying somewhere where we think that they're more likely to get a good strong scent, and so that's why you're constantly looking, while you're working the dog, you're constantly looking for tracks as well for those telltale signs that might indicate it's fresh sign. So we really need to, to cover the whole paddock with the dogs, and um, I think that that's the only way you're going to get these last couple of cats. Um, just driving around and with a spotlight, you might come across them, but I think the dogs are, is one of the best ways to find these last couple of cats. <laughs>